Hello and welcome to Work Tools 123. Today we're going to talk about the software development lifecycle, also called SDLC or Application Development or App Dev. This is something that was uh, extremely important in the past when people were developing a lot of code from scratch and it is still really important today now that people are using systems like Salesforce where they're not necessarily developing code from scratch but doing a lot of configuration. You still have to define what the business uh, really needs. We're going to talk about eight stages today, starting with project management, where the tech team names a project manager. Second stage is requirements, where the business really lays out all of the things they need to do. Then the tech spec, where the tech team translates the requirements into a technical spec. Uh, then the, the fourth stage, where the tech team uh, takes that tech, uh, technical spec and uh, starts developing or configuring the code. Uh, then once they're done with that development, they move to unit testing where the individual pieces are tested. Um, then the next stage after that is you take all those individual pieces and you test them together in system testing to make sure they all work together, including uh, if you're using something like a Salesforce that you're also testing uh, related systems that tie into it, internal systems. Then the last thing is the tech group then transitions uh, the work to the business group and they do user acceptance testing to make sure it meets all their requirements. And then the last thing is obviously the production launch. So in terms of project management, uh, the technology group is going to name a project manager to coordinate all aspects of the project, including the development um, of a detailed project plan and schedule. Um, they're also going to uh, do what I think of as names and roles at the start of the project. They're going to create a list of stakeholders, a single point of contact for every vendor group and system area, database group, app group, security group, etc. And each stakeholder will have a clearly defined role. Next uh, part is the requirements. The business group names a business analyst who's going to define the requirements and business rules, work closely with the project manager on the project plan and drive user acceptance testing. Uh, the main thing they're working on is the BRD, the business requirements document, to define all requirements for the business and each requirement is going to have a unique tracking number. And then finally BRD review and sign off uh, where they have a meeting with all stakeholders and they have to sign off on the BRD um, after this meeting. Uh, the next step after that is the technical spec so the, the project manager takes that BRD and translates it into a technical spec and also names members of the development team. Um, the technical leads, each system area has to name a technical lead. They're going to have to attend all meetings, involve other members of their groups as necessary, and write requirements for their system, technical specs for the systems. Then the project manager combines all those requirements into one tech spec. Then there's a tech spec review and sign off where uh, the spec is reviewed in a meeting with all stakeholders and they have to sign off on the tech spec after this meeting. That leads into development, the fourth step. Um, uh, the developer team and any vendor developers, if applicable, uh, will write all the code and set all the configurations needed to deliver the requirements. Okay, and then we move into the fifth piece, which is unit testing. Uh, the uh, unit test cases and test scripts uh, will be created uh, in a unit test plan um, and the business group have to, has to sign off on that. There's going to be a bug tracking database to keep track of bugs. Um, an integration test region will be set up even though it's, it's still unit testing. The QA team is going to set up and verify connectivity between all required systems, internal and external, for an integrated test region and make sure that only one test region is uh, set up and will be used for, for all the integration testing. And also they're going to, during unit testing, begin to set up test cases for the integration test. And then during this period, they're going to be setting up uh, the project manager testing meetings, daily testing and bug report meetings um, to make sure everybody knows what needs to be fixed. And it's very important to have members from the business group at these meetings. Also, logins and passwords, they got to make sure that everybody has the correct uh, permissions into the test region. Um, so that leads into uh, the system or integration testing section. 
where the QA team will complete and sign off on unit testing. They've got to make sure they do that before the integrated testing starts. Uh, they're also going to create a full integration test plan, which they should have started in the unit testing, right? They're going to make sure that the data interfaces and connectivity is all set up, that all the systems are speaking to each other properly. Um, and then they're going to enter all those bugs into the bug tracking database, make sure that all the issues are tracked. And finally, requirements verification. By the end of integration testing, the QA team has to verify that every requirement is working properly. That's really uh, critical. That leads us into the user acceptance testing. So now we move from the technology group back to the business group. The QA team has to sign off on the unit and integration testing before this UAT begins. But then the business group uh, business analyst okay, um, has to create a full user acceptance test plan mirroring all their business requirements. And then they have to include all the test cases and test scripts and then use that bug tracking database to enter any issues with business or user acceptance um, testing. Last piece is production launch. That technology group project manager is in charge. They have to create a deployment plan, a full deployment plan including staging and sequencing of the individual system rollouts uh, involved in the project. They have to define sign-off criteria uh, for a successful launch uh, and what defines that. And then if the launch isn't successful, what's the rollback plan and contingency plan uh, in the event the launch is unsuccessful. Okay, so those are really the key pieces. And the last thing we're going to talk about today is just documentation, right? And the documents that have to be completed for every uh, project. First, the project plan and schedule. Uh, we spoke about that. Business requirement document, uh, critical. This is really what the business says is required. Um, then the technical spec which is written by the technology group uh, project manager, translates the BRD into uh, a technical document, okay? And that has to be signed off on by all stakeholders before the development begins. Then we move into the unit test plan, right? Which is, again, is written by the technology group PM. Sign-offs are required by business and technology, but lays out the, the unit testing requirements. Then we go into an integrated test plan, where we test all the different uh, pieces uh, together, all the different pieces laid out in the unit test plan. Um, then finally, there's a UAT test plan, which is going to be written by the business analyst. Um, and finally, the production plan and rollout schedule, which again is, is written by the, the project manager who works in the technology group. So that's basically it. Thanks very much for um, joining us today uh, at WorkTools123, please click the button to subscribe and also you can uh, click uh, the other link that I have here in the lower right hand corner if you want to get a copy of our free two page software development lifecycle SDLC guide. Uh, it's free, no sign up necessary. So that's it for today. Thanks very much for joining us at WorkTools123. See you next time.